Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. Guys, in this video, I will be discussing the today's actual coding questions which were asked in Accenture exam. Okay, so this exam happened today only, that is on 26th July 2024. So I will be discussing both of the coding questions in this video because in every exam of Accenture, there are two coding questions asked. So both I will be discussing. So this exam is the part of Accenture that is happening for off-campus 2024 batch. Since 2025 on-campus Accenture is also going on, so you, irrespective of the fact whether you are from 2024 or 2025, you can watch this video till the end because you will get to know the different different type of questions which are getting asked in the Accenture exam. Guys, on my channel, what I have done, I have made a dedicated playlist for Accenture coding preparation. Okay, so from now, now on, whenever I will be posting a coding preparation video or actual coding questions, so I will be posting in adding uh, those questions in this playlist only. Because in the previous video of Accenture, I have told you that for 2025 batch students, I am starting this preparation series. So all the coding questions that I will be discussing from now on, whether they are from 2024 or from the 2025, I will be posting in this channel only, in this playlist only. So make sure that you visit this playlist also after watching this video. And guys, one more thing, many of you are requesting me to make a dedicated Telegram group for Accenture discussion. So I have made it. Link of this Telegram group you will find in the description box. Do join this group. We will discuss every hiring for 2025 here. Currently, Accenture is going on, so therefore, Accenture hiring, hiring discussion is here. The links of everything you will find in the description box. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and let's start this video and do hit that like and subscribe button for this channel. Okay, so guys, the first coding question is rearrangement of bits. Okay, so first of all, I will be discussing the question, then the approach of this question, and finally, the coding part of this question. Okay, so Alex gives you a positive number n and wants you to rearrange the bits of the number in its binary representation such that all set bits are in the consecutive order. Your task is to find and return an integer value representing the minimum possible number that can be formed after rearranging the bits of the number n. Okay, so uh, yesterday also I made a video regarding Accenture wherein I have discussed about the bits question. So you can see that bit masking or bits related questions are very much important in the Accenture. So I know that this uh, by reading just the description of the question that it will not become clear. Let me just explain you with the help of the examples. So input 1 is 10. Okay, input 1 is 10. Let's just first convert this 10 into the binary form. So what will be? It will be 8, 0, 0, 1. So this is the binary representation of 10. But the question is saying, we have to rearrange the binary representation of the number such that all the set bits are in the consecutive order. Set bits are in the consecutive order. What are the set bits? These ones. These ones are the set bits and they should be in the consecutive order. We have to rearrange like this. Next is your task is to find and return an integer value representing the minimum possible number. So we have to rearrange this number with all the set bits consecutively such that the resulting number, resulting decimal number is smallest. So see how many set bits are here. Here there are two set bits. Okay. How can we arrange these two set bits so that the decimal equivalent will be the minimum? So, what are the first? Let's see what are the possible scenarios. We can arrange two set bits like this: one zero, one zero. Sorry, two. Sorry, two uh, set bits should be consecutive in order. Okay, so we can arrange it like this: zero, one, one, zero. So, what will be the decimal equivalent for zero, one, one, zero? It will be uh, this is four, this is two, this is will be six. Another way is doing like this: one, one, zero, zero. So what will be equivalent? It will be 12. And next is we can do it like this 0, 0, 1, 1. So what is the decimal equivalent? It is 3. So these are all the possible options of rearranging the bits. Okay. And and uh, we have to find the minimum number. Minimum number. Uh, okay. So what is the minimum number? So this 3 is the minimum number. Okay. Because here 0, 0, 1, 1. So all the two set bits are uh, arranged consequently and the resultant is there. Okay, so you can see here the output is also 3 here. So let's just move towards the next input so the things will become more clear. So the next number is 2, binary representation of 2 is 1, 0. Okay, so how many set bits are there? Set bits are 1. How can we rearrange? We can rearrange like this 0, 1 or 1, 0. Okay, we can rearrange like this only. So uh, this will give us 1 and this will give us 2 only. So what is the uh, easy uh, what is the smallest number that we are getting we are getting this is the smallest number that is 1 so therefore the output is 1 only now 
I hope the question is clear to you. If still you have doubts, let's just move towards the approach, and then approach after approach, the things will become more clear to you. Now let's just take a number uh, in the starting only. So we were taking ten. Okay. So we were taking ten. This is the binary representation of ten. So the simple approach of this question is that what we have to do: count the number of set bits. Count set bits. Okay. Count the number of set bits. Then just move the set bits towards the right right most all the set all the set bits should be consecutive should be consecutive and start from start from right okay your answer is done start from right your answer is done what we'll do we'll count the set bits it is 2 what we will do we will just start from right okay total four were there so we will start from right we will place one uh, one set bit here we will place second set bit here so two set bits are done and in the remaining places we are we will be giving zero only okay in the remaining places we will be giving zero so here the answer is coming as 3 so this is what we have to simply count the set bits and we have to uh, place them consecutive starting from right and in all the cases this particular approach will give you the this particular approach will give you the least answer okay least answer this is the easiest approach that we can think of now guys see that how we will be counting the set bits okay how we will be counting the set bits and then how we will be converting it into the lower number so what we'll do to find we will focus on bit by bit see because we have to count the set bits we have to focus bit by bit only so how we will know that this least uh, this is the least significant bit and this is the most significant bit okay so how will know that this bit is 1 or 0 okay so what we'll do we'll simply do an and operation with 1 so and operation with 1 will give 1 0 0 0 okay so if the if the and operation of the number and 1 gives you 1 it means that least significant bit is 1 so we have a count variable which will store the uh, what it will store it will store uh, the count so now we have done the and operation and it has given us 1 here so it means that this was the Uh, one bit set bit okay next what we'll do once the uh, once this row is done when this particular operation is done we will do 1001 right shift by 1 so this will give us 100 again uh, this resultant number we will do uh, and with 1 and it will give us 0 so if it is giving us 0 then it means that this least significant bit was 0 only so we will not increment counter here so uh, the role of this bit is also done then again we will do this uh, 100 right shift by 1 it will give us 1 1 uh, uh, it will give us 1 0 again and with 1 we will do and it will give us 0 so it means it is a not a set bit so again with 1 0 we will do 1 0 right shift by 1 we will do and it will result in 1 and again we will do and of 1 so it will give us 1 only okay and of 1 will give us 1 so it means that this is the set bit so we will do our count with 2 so total 2 set bits are there okay now since two set bits are there we know that we have to start from the right okay we have to arrange them like this from starting from right and we have to form the corresponding number so 0011 we know manually that it will give us 3 but how we have to calculate it we will just uh, convert binary to decimal so 20 into 1 then plus of 2 to the power 1 into 1 so what it will give in the resultant what it will give so 20 into 1 plus 2 to the power 1 into 1 it will give us 3 only so this is how we will convert our binary to decimal and using the and operation also and using the right shift operation also so i hope now the approach is clear to you let's just quickly move towards the coding part the things will be crystal clear once you see the code okay so guys before moving ahead if you are finding this video informative do hit that like and subscribe button for this channel and do join our telegram group it is very much important for you and me also we will be discussing lot of things you lot of confusions you will be having currently date of on campus exam is not uh, announced but all the updates i will be sharing on this telegram group only do join it the link is in the description box okay and uh, you can after watching this video you can go for this playlist also it will contain all the relevant information that you require okay so now let's start the code so first of all what we are doing we will be taking n as input okay we will be taking n as input so c in n okay then what will we doing we will be iterating over it okay we will be iterating over it we need to find the set bits we need to find the set bits okay how to find set bit i have already told you so while our n is greater than 0 while our n is greater than 0 what will happen if our n 
and 1. We need to find whether the least significant bit is a set bit or a 0. So for that I have already told you we will be doing the operation, we will be doing the AND operation. So if N and 1, so if the least significant bit in N was 1, then this AND operation will give us 1. Okay, so if this set bit, uh, least significant bit is 1, so this AND operation will give us 1 only. So we will increment simply count plus plus because we need to find the total number of set bits here first. Else if it, it will be the least significant bit in N will be 0 then this AND operation will give us 0 so this if condition will never be executed okay once the role of the current least significant set bit is done what we will do we will be doing the right shift operation so n is equal to n right shift 1 so that our n tends to so that our one bit move ahead and our n tends to 0 and we can like now focus on the next bit we can check whether the next bit is now 1 or 0 okay so after this while loop is over now inside the count we will have that okay total how many set bits are there now we have to from this set bit we have to find the least decimal number that is possible simply we have to convert from binary to uh, decimal okay so as i have already told you if there were two set bits let me just give it here so if there were two set bits what we will doing we will be doing 2 to the power 0 into 1 plus 2 to the power 1 uh, where is that operator okay so 2 to the power 1 into 1 so this will give us 3 if there are 2 set bits okay if there are 3 so similarly 2 to the power 0 to the power 1 then 2 to the power 2 so this is how we will be doing it it's a simple uh, binary to decimal conversion okay so int answer is equal to 0 int power is equal to 0 okay so what we are doing we will be iterating over the count that how many set bits are there so i equal to 0 i less than count Okay, I plus plus. Sorry, I plus plus. Yeah. But here, what we'll be doing? We'll be doing in our answer variable. We will be adding two to the power. Uh, two to the power. Uh, sorry, power will be one here. Okay, so power will be one. Uh, okay, power will be one, and we'll be doing the two to the power zero. That is power into one. Okay, we'll be doing power into one. And we will be doing uh, for every iteration we will be doing power is equal to power into 2. Okay. So if you look closely, this is what exactly things are happening. That first is 2 to the power 0 is uh, 1 only. So power is starting from 1. So 1 into 1. Then 2 to the power 1. So we are for this we are doing power for every iteration we are doing power is equal to power into 2. Okay. In the end we are simply printing out our answer. Okay. So let's just now see the output. So 10 will should us should give us. 3 as an output okay so i hope you are understanding the things clearly here if any doubts you can write in the comment section i will be happy to help for 10 we have got the correct answer next uh in out input was 2 next input was 2 okay next input was 2 and it should give us 1 it should give us 1 okay so yeah it is giving us 1 okay so there will be one edge case that you will be missing so if there is one so if if our n is double equivalent to 1, if our n is double equivalent to 1, what will happen then? Uh, okay, count plus plus will happen then again, yeah, n is 1, so answer should also be 1 only in that case. Let's just see that edge case also. So, if our answer is 1, then what should happen? So, answer should be, uh, resultant answer should be 1 only. So, yeah, output is 1. So, this particular code will pass all the test cases that will be given to you. Okay, so this was question 1 that were, uh, was asked in today's slot. Now let's just discuss question 2 also. Question 2 is very easy. Not much things are required there. So uh, do hit that like and subscribe button if you have not done it as of now. Okay. So guys now let's just see the second question. It is on the very easy side. Okay. So what is the question? Its name is rock, paper and scissors. So two players A and B are playing the game of rock, paper and scissors. Player A chooses a move represented by string M. And the move can be one of the following. Rock, paper or scissor. Okay. These can be the move player A can. Uh, start so rock beats scissor scissor beats paper paper beats rock so these are the rules of this game your task is to find and return a string value representing the winning move for b okay so the move should be the output should be the move that should always win so a player uh, the move of a player will be the input and output should be that move that always the b player should uh, should win so that b player should win so input is rock so uh, a player uh, takes out rock so how will player b win so it should have it should 
take out paper only to win from dog. Similarly, player A uh, take out scissor, and how will player two win? So it will it should take out uh, rock. So output should be the move of player B, and that B should always win. Okay, so this is a very easy question that you can expect in the Accenture exam. Okay, so this question is also I think repeated from past week's Accenture exam only. So let's just quickly move towards the code. There is no proper approach for it. There is a very simple approach. Let's just quickly move towards the uh, coding part directly. It's like it will be hardly two to three lines of the code. Okay, so I am writing this code in C++, but you, you can uh, write in Java also or Java Python also. So string, uh, let's suppose uh, player A, okay, player A, C in the move of player A, okay. Then what will we doing? If, okay, if uh, player A, okay, so player A double equivalent to rock, okay. So if the string uh, player A double equivalent to rock, uh, it should be double quotes. Sorry, it should be double quotes, okay. Then we should print out. Then what we should print out? Uh, control Z. Then we should print out rock. So then we should print out paper. It's simple. Else if else if player A double equivalent to paper, then we should print out scissors. Okay. Else. If there is a third case wherein the uh, player A is putting out scissor, then we should print out scissor will beat. What it will beat? Scissors can be beat from beaten from rock. Okay, so this is the entire question and answer. Okay, let's just uh, test it. I take out rock, so output should be uh, paper. Okay, so this is just a two to three line question. It's very simple. You just have to always win in the output. So rock. So let's just test for paper also so paper should print out scissors okay since because scissor will win from paper okay so i hope you are finding this videos helpful do hit that like and subscribe button for it and there is one more thing rock paper uh, scissors let's just write scissors scissors spelling i think i have made it wrong just a second okay so till that till that time do hit that like and subscribe button if you have not done it till now and do join our telegram group that is very much dedicated to 2025 batch students okay so see, yeah, it's giving us wrong. So all the test cases will pass if you uh, should pass the, when you will be writing this code. Okay. So this was all for this video. These two coding questions were asked today only. That is on 26th July 2024 in the 10 a.m. slots. So do hit that like and subscribe button for this effort. Thank you for watching this video.